the silver and the bronze. I give you Canada, France, Germany, Serbia, and Australia. Germany, um, more so than Canada, I think that their talent, it's a little more tiered. Uh, we know what Dennis Schroeder's capable of, Franz Wagner, another player, Daniel Tice steps up, and Mo Wagner as well. They're built to really take advantage of the mistakes that Team USA makes, and they, they can make the effort plays. Newswire, only on SportsGrid. Try and set the stage for what should be a great year of NFL action. There's a handful of teams that potentially can compete for a Super Bowl championship. Confusion and uncertainty this year more than some in the past. This team looks like it's ready to make a move, but we just don't know if it's bad or good this year. J.J. McCarthy is eventually going to take over, but it's like it's a no-lose situation for them. I mean, they suck. They were 7 Only ten. on Sports Grid. That race for the Cy Young? Pretty much as equally compelling and intriguing as the race for the wild card spots in the National League. And also keep in mind, this team doesn't pitch the entire season. So his ERA gets affected much, much more if he has a poor outing than, let's just say, Chris Sale or Zach Wheeler that have been there all season long. This would be a fun yeah. one to watch it play out. But the big loser last night were the Phillies and Zach Wheeler. The early line, only on Sports Grid. Hopefully they learned their lesson. Hey, this ain't the NBA, bro. You don't have six fouls, and they will check you on this stuff. And Brooks has a reputation coming into this. You can tell the refs are watching them, and they were on them all the time. This was 10, 12 years ago. Canada playing Greece with that type of lead that they had. They probably would have mentally crumbled and lost that game to Greece by three or four points in the final minute of that ball game. Sports Rage Late Night, only on Sports Grid. Pharrell has taken over. Let's go. It's Pharrell. Coast to coast. Steaks, chicks, stacks. You and I are going to make a lot of money. It's Pharrell. Coast to coast. So I had a guy uh, threatening me the other day playing basketball. He's like, Pharrell, you got to give me guys in fantasy that are going to make me money. And I was like, what do you mean? He goes, can you talk about guys that are going to make me money on your stupid show so that I can make some money? And I went, I need to call Joe Pisapia. I had him on the other day. I got him back on because he knows how to make people money in fantasy. And I suck. You can watch (laughs) fantasy sports today, Sunday mornings on sports grid tv it's everywhere it's very popular you can follow joe at joe pisa pia 17 on x it's p-i-s-a-p-i-a in case you're stupid like me joe good to see you i want to go through the litany of games and just kind of uh pick some guys that you like on these teams that you'd be Mm -hmm. uh, invested in for fantasy so tonight there's three games uh we'll start with texans steelers who do you like on those teams Well, it's funny. We just had a big expert league draft this past weekend. And one of the Steelers that for me is rising up the draft board in the super flex world is Justin Fields. Uh, I'm just looking at this very practically, which is I'm the Pittsburgh Steelers. Am I trying to resurrect some mid thirties quarterback who looks like he's on the back end of his career? Or am I trying to get reps and get a guy going who could possibly be the future of the quarterback situation in Pittsburgh? And Fields is clearly the latter. And to me, Fields is a guy that I was aggressive on this past weekend and drafting him as my third quarterback. And I think other people should start looking at him in this scenario as well, because I just don't see a scenario here at this point where we keep running out this Russell Wilson narrative too much longer. Now, now maybe I'm wrong. Maybe we will get uh, Justin Fields to sit for a few weeks, but I don't think it's going to be very long. I really don't. And we keep waiting for Russell Wilson to, you know, get healthy, get right, get on the field and all that stuff to me. I think it's Fields' opportunity right now to really continue to prove himself. And so far, a lot of good, positive things are coming back. I don't want to take too much out of, you know, the guys wearing shorts playing football because it's a different game when they're really coming after you. But I do think Justin Fields is one of those names. George Pickens is another one of those names, too. And on the flip side, I think when you're talking about Nico Collins on the Texans' side, I think his ADP is still very uh, suppressed. I think this is a player that if you look at what he did last year – that he's not getting enough credit. Uh, I know Stephon Diggs is there now. I know there's a lot of concern. Well, is is there enough target share for him to go around necessarily? And the answer is yes, absolutely there is. This was a guy that finished as wide receiver nine overall. He's being drafted as wide receiver 15 or 16 right now. That's a clear value that I'm going to take every single time. So Nico 
is one of those players that right now I think is being a little undervalued, not a lot, but just a little because of the uncertainty, maybe a cloudy picture with the Tank Dells of the world and Stefan Diggs of the world now also there. But I think that Nico pretty much proved last year he is the go-to guy. He's the clear number one. And the other guys are window dressing accessories. All right. Uh, Falcons and Dolphins are playing tonight in Miami. Who do you like on those teams? Well, Devon H. I think has got to be uh, one of the absolute lottery tickets this year, right? I mean, the speed is off the charts. The size is a little concerning. Now, he did put some muscle on, so that's encouraging. But sometimes some of that extra muscle can lead to even more sprains and strains and, and issues too i just actually had uh, one of the uh doctors on my show too to, to break down some of those you know pieces about hn and, and what he said was look you have to understand that even if he has the muscle even if he has all this the style of running and his size he's going to miss some time so you have to get him at the right adp he's currently going as a top 10 running back right in that range is still derrick henry so henry's still a player for me that i just can't say no to at that same range And as exciting as Achan is, I think that at the same time, you have to realize there isn't a normal risk. Now, on that same Dolphins team, Jalen Waddle, another guy, came in as a rookie at 100 catches, had 1,300 yards two years ago. Last year gets hurt. Now, all of a sudden, he's been banished to that middle of wide receiver, too. I don't understand it. I don't get it. Jalen Waddle is still that dude, is still an incredible talent. That offense is incredibly efficient. So I am not concerned at all. And then looking on the other side, too, of that Falcons team, look, Bijan Robinson, I think, is prepared now and in a situation with a new coaching staff to really emerge and challenge for that number one overall RB spot, especially after CMC had 417 touches last year, which is an enormous amount that typically people do not do well the following season after that sort of workload. And that has been proven time and time again. Uh, you're excited about Kyle Pitts. You're excited about Drake London. What? Kirk Cousins can bring to this offense. And then ancillary pieces like Darnell Mooney are still interesting. But in this game in particular, you know, what we're looking for is guys to get healthy, guys to stay healthy out of it who are participating today. But Jalen Waddle right now uh, on the Dolphins to me is that guy that uh, I just keep seeing falling in drafts. He's being undervalued. I think it is actually to the detriment of a lot of people out there. So scoop him up in your fantasy leagues because he is going to be a good return on investment. Uh, good one tonight in the Charm City, the Eagles and Ravens. They got a lot of good players on these teams. Yeah, a lot. <laughs> that would be an understatement for sure. Lamar just doesn't get enough credit, man. Another MVP. I'm wondering how many MVPs does he have to win before people start, you know, really chasing him in fantasy at this point. And I know in single quarterback leagues, there's still value on the board. But the nice thing about Lamar is there's like a flare that goes up in every single draft, right? The Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes, Jalen Hurts flare where you know that pretty soon after, okay, this is the quarterback run. This is when it's going to happen. This is the round. And then Lamar's usually sitting there as the fourth guy off that board. And that's a pretty good investment. Now, do I like Richardson, Joe Burrow, and those guys are going after? Sure. But Lamar is a little bit safer at this point than those guys. So it's something to keep in mind. And you know, Lamar Jackson's ability to rush for an enormous total to still score touchdowns, even with Derrick Henry now there, who, by the way, another guy not getting enough respect. I don't care that he's 30 years old. Derrick Henry is built different. He is now going to a team where he is going to get a ton of work in a much improved offensive line, a much improved offense of the team that ran the football more than anybody else last year. So why should we not love Derrick Henry this year? One more time in the sun. I don't know why I don't get it. Uh, For the last five years, he finished as a top five RB and the one year he didn't, he was still RB eight and he, I'm sorry, he's RB 16 and only played eight games because he got hurt that year and missed half the season. Just let that sink in. He was so good. He was still RB16 with half a season. So I'm loving Derrick Henry this year. The tough part with the Ravens is looking at that wide receiver core too. Andrew's a little injury prone the last couple of years, a little concerned with him at the tight end spot. Zay Flowers, another one too. Can he get more consistency? Perhaps we can hope that that finds him. And on the Eagles side too, I think this is going to be really interesting because you want to see what this offense looks like. Uh, Shane Steichen left last year. You saw what happened in terms of that offensive coordinator. Right. Not really getting it a flow with everybody. And I think that now you're hoping that A.J. Brown, Saquon Barkley, Jalen Hurts, everybody can get on the same page here and bounce back after a disappointing season for the Eagles. So uh, you just did a draft. You're in several drafts. <laughs> and does it blow your mind now how enormous this has gotten over the last several years? Like it's just gone through the roof fantasy. Like we always knew that it was year to year getting bigger, but – did you ever imagine that it would be as big as it is now and as profitable as it is now and how enormous it is? It's like, 
it's bigger than uh, literally watching the games has become mm-hmm. secondary to people playing fantasy. Well, this is how we take in the games, right? We take it in through wagering. We take it in through fantasy. It's crafting our own sports entertainment experience around something that we really can't control, but we can feel like we can control a little bit. And that's fun. It's fun on a Sunday. It's another way to get that action. And I think what's so interesting to me is the evolution. You know, you see all these dynasty leagues in the last five to 10 years. You see all these big high stakes leagues that have popped up too, where people are making big investments in the fantasy leagues. And and look, NFL is a tough one. Injuries can really hurt you, which is why it's really important to understand. I think we lost uh, Joe there. Just a dramatic, <laughs> just a dramatic crash and burn at the end. Do we got him back? Can we get him? I think I got him there. Here we go. Finish what you were saying there, Joe. You were right there talking about these enormous investments in dynasty leagues. Yeah, it is. And look, it's really tough. Uh, the dynasty leagues, the big time uh, NFFC leagues, all these different uh, high stakes leagues that are out there too. But this is why the value on the board is so important, understanding how to work that value, because that's how you get advantage in your casual league, in these high stakes leagues, all across the board. It's having a strategy and being able to be flexible and be prepared in drafts. Those are the two things, you know, you can't control too much, but you can control being prepared and being flexible and having different plans as the draft unfolds. So what that means in Portuguese is if you watch fantasy sports today on Sundays on Sports Grid, you can literally cheat by getting all of Joe's skinny and using it to win your league and win cash and then pretend like you're smart with all your loser friends. And McGregor Sports and Entertainment is now an owner of Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship. Welcome to the big leagues. David Feldman, baby, he did it. He's now an owner of BKFC with us, and we're going to take this motherfucking thing all the way to the top now. This um, uh, France Belgian game, I you know obviously I think France is going to win it in overtime. They led by six in overtime, and then Belgium cut it to three. But Belgium just had the ball and took a terrible shot from like forty feet out. This chick hoisted one with the shot clock going down, and it was just it was all air. She missed the rim by six feet. I mean, it was a forty foot shot. It was terrible, and France got the ball, and now they 
uh, are going to the line with 14 seconds left. And I think uh, one free throw ices it. Two definitely ices it. They're not scoring twice. They're not hitting two threes in 14 seconds. So that'll be that. France will go to the uh, gold medal game against uh, U.S. And the chick hit the free throws that are up for. I think it's lights out for Belgium now. France will win. And I don't think the refs had anything to do with it. Uh, they let them play. It was a violent game. It was a really good game. I mean, it went, you know, they tied it with no time left to send it to overtime. Basically, uh, it hit two threes to do it. And then uh, they blew it in overtime and lost to France. But I thought the game was as exciting, frankly, to me, watching it as the uh, U.S. men against Serbia. It was as good a game. The game was really intense and violent. And there, a lot of big buckets and big shots and and ones and everything. It had it all. The French women will win and go to play the USA on Sunday for the gold. Yeah. Uh, look, uh, two days in a row, we've had a fantastic finish with yeah. the hoops uh, for us. And look, uh, Belgium was able to pull that off at the end of regulation. I don't think they're going to be able to pull that off again, uh, what they pulled off there. So France no, most likely, done. like you the said. The game's over. The, uh, ga- the game's finished. over. There's, there's no time finished. left. It's over. So uh, uh, France goes to both gold medal games in men's and women's yeah france and the united states both uh in both so the united states will win gold in both france will win yes. silver in both yeah uh, that's how it'll yes. all get uh shaken down this weekend french people all hate right. it. i just wanted to say that like everyone uh, three, else hates us. three baseball games left uh before we move on to all the nfl preseason this weekend mets are in seattle uh starting for series tonight jose quintana and bryce miller uh, kick things off for us. Minus 135 for the M's, plus 115 for the Mets, but flat eight is the total in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, these are teams that can uh, lately do it, right? Put up some runs. I like the over eight in this one, and, you know, I think both of these guys, Quintana and, and Miller, are around four runs a game, so I think it's right where it should be. I like the over. I like Seattle at home. Uh, I think the further west the Mets go, the less likely they'll win. Yeah, uh, no question about that. The Pirates start a weekend series in Los Angeles against the L.A. Dodgers. Of course, uh, Mitch, don't call me Helen Keller, going for the Buccos. Jack Flaherty uh, is going for the Dodgers tonight. Of course, Joe, uh, Scotty, you know this being uh, a lifelong Pirate fan. Flaherty, when he was with the Cardinals, uh, destroyed uh, the Buccos. I think he's 10-1. and one. With a 2.2 or something like that against the Pirates in his career. Uh, As far as tonight goes, minus 210 for the Dodgers, plus 170 for the Buccos, and a flat eight. Jesus, with those numbers you just gave me, I have like no choice, right, than to take the Dodgers, but I'm not laying that kind of piece. Look, I got to be honest with you, I don't care what Jack Flaherty's done. I think Helen Keller's a better pitcher than Flaherty. I'm going to take the Pirates at plus 175. You remember when the Pirates went out to Dodger Stadium and swept four games? It's happened before. They're not afraid to play the Dodgers. You know why? Because the Dodgers take the Pirates lightly. They don't think that they're going to have to work to win. I think they think it's a walk in the park. And Helen Keller can flat out pitch. You know it. I know it. I'll take the big price. Give me that payout if they get lucky tonight and win at the ravine with the Dodgers sleeping at the wheel. Hopefully with a rowdy, rowdy long ball uh, thrown in there, too. Uh, that would be great if we got the rowdy, rowdy. Uh, ring the bell. 7-1 uh, to one off of uh, Jack Flaherty. Uh, and finally, the Tigers are in San Francisco against the Giants. Robbie Ray will go for the Giants. The Tigers have this new thing they're doing, Scotty. Uh, when Scooble's not pitching, it seems like uh, they never announce who their starter is, and they throw some opener in there. Uh, for an inning or two. So who knows uh, who's going to start this game for them. Minus 185 for the Giants, plus 150 for the Tigers, and a seven and a half. Yeah, I'm hearing Maeda again. I think we thought that the other night, and they didn't use him. I think they'll use him tonight, but it doesn't matter. I I like uh, Robbie Ray. I like the Giants. I like them on the run line at plus 110. Uh, Lay it. And I also like the over seven and a half. I think the Giants will score eight or nine runs themselves. There you go. Uh, that is your night in baseball uh, as we get set for the weekend there. All right, a few other things. Uh, Steve Kerr says the United States went over Serbia, one of the greatest games 
he's ever been a part of. You were just talking that the women are going to play the France and the United States. Well, of course, tomorrow the men are going to play Wembenyama and France for the gold medal. That is a big 16 and a half for you tomorrow with a 176 and a half total. I think they got their scare and they are going to absolutely smash them tomorrow, Scotty. That is my call. Yeah, I don't. Uh, I hope you're right for your sake. I, I don't believe that. Uh, I think they've effed around with everybody, and I think France will cover the number. And I think it'll be a really close game. France is playing great. They've got all that momentum and, and juice going in that direction. They made it to this game somehow inexplicably. I thought Germany would have beat them, but they didn't. Uh, and they're tough. Uh, their rotation, I think their coach has done a great job of how he uh, put Gobert and uh, Fournier on the bench, and they go with these other guys. We'll see what they can do. The reason uh, I think that Kerr said it was the best game he's ever been a part of, Mike, because I fre- flank, you know, if you look at the game, I thought that they, he said they played the perfect game, uh, and they did. Like their off ball screen shot selection, their threes, they were 15 of 30 at one point. They ended up 15 of, of 39. They ended up missing nine straight at the end of the. Uh, game in the fourth quarter but before that for three quarters they played flawless basketball they had five threes in each uh, quarter Uh, they moved the ball to the open man perfectly they had him by the throat they had him beat they they unraveled and blew it their shots stopped falling and then the U.S. started making stops and steals and buckets and layups and threes and they got calls the KD call with the joker foul a double possession a six-point swing on one trip down the floor the fact that they came back and won that game it was the perfect game plan for an upset that fell just short that's why the game was so And McGregor Sports and Entertainment is now an owner of Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship. Welcome to the big leagues. David Feldman, baby, he did it. He's now an owner of BKFC with us, and we're going to take this motherfucking thing all the way to the top now. on the 9th of August to look ahead to Christmas Day. I think it's crucial that we get in those five plays in the NBA here in the dead of summer. Uh, Very important. Well, uh, nobody waits longer to put out their schedule 
than the NBA. Uh, it is actually quite amazing. It seems like they want to wait as close to the when the season actually starts as possible uh, to release their schedule. So uh, the dribs and drabs have started with them. Christmas Day, a day that a lot of people look towards to the NBA, although now the NFL's run them over and taken Christmas over as well. Here's your lineup. Uh, the Spurs and Wembenyama. You knew it wouldn't be long before they uh, moved into the Christmas Day slate. They'll be at the Garden to start things off with the Knicks uh, early on Christmas Day. Timberwolves at the Mavs. Sixers at the defending champion Celtics. Lakers and Warriors. Man, I mean, they just love rolling that Laker-Warrior game out every year on Christmas Day. Uh, and then the Nuggets and the Suns, who I think also have played like three of the last four Christmas Days. Uh, they always pair those two up as well. Well, uh, you know, can I look at those games again? I just want to say uh, I like the Knicks at home at the Garden. I like the Mavs at home. I like the Celtics at home. I like the Lakers on the road in San Francisco. And I like the Nuggets on the road in Phoenix. I'll take those teams no matter what the spread is. There you go. Uh, so uh, NBA schedule, the rest of it, who knows uh, when they're going to actually release that. Uh, a couple weeks ago, we talked about Jalen Brunson taking less money to be with the Knicks, they did uh, the big press conference for him yesterday, Scotty. Everybody came out, and they also named him captain yeah. of the Knicks. The new Knicks captain, Jalen Brunson. Here he is telling you why he took less money. I think anyone who knows me knows what I'm about. And so um, if anyone did call me and tell me to do that, they're probably not my peers. <laughs> but um, like I said, uh, I think about every decision. Um, every decision I make, and um, I'm completely comfortable with what I've done. Um, obviously, I'm I'm well off. Myself and my family were obviously well off, so that's first and foremost. But um, I want to win. I want to win here. Well, I'll give him credit. Uh, at least he owns it, that he's already loaded, uh, set for life, never has to really do anything except play basketball. And then when his career ends, he can count his money. He's going to have plenty of it. I think the the moral of the story of this is not so much that he wants a ring and he helped them so they could spend money on other players. It's that uh, in reality, he realizes that the next deal that he gets is going to be triple the size of this one. That's it. Like, the, the, I mean, this guy... This is not going to continue where I don't believe that he's going to do it again. Like this is a one-time deal that he's going to take this, uh, this money and spread it around so that they can get other players and, and be healthier fiscally, the team. That's why he allegedly did it, but he's still making a lot of money in the deal. And the next deal that he has is going to be so enormous. And I guarantee you that when that one comes around, there's not going to be any nice Jalen Brunson giving money back. He's going to get all that money one way or the other. I think this is a beginning phase of a two-phase payment. One, this deal ends. The next deal he gets, he'll be uh, the richest player in the NBA. You'll uh, see. He probably will. He'll be right up there, that's for sure. Uh, there's a lot of those guys. Uh, I mean, 50 55 $60 million a year. Uh, that's He'll the going rate now to be in that conversation. Uh, Preseason football. We only had two games last night. Let me squeeze one of them in for you here. Uh, both of them were as uh, boring as you could possibly be. 14-3. Uh, right. to three, uh, The Giants beat the Lions. Uh, we always hear names we won't hear during the regular season, during the preseason. How about Eric Gray? Who? Uh, your boy had not one but two <laughs> tutties for the Giants last night. Here is uh, the long one on Fox 5 in New York. Second and 10. Gray on the draw. Gray. Oh, man. Missed one. Wow. wow, who needs Saquon Barkley when you got a guy no one's ever heard of rushing for touchdowns? I watched the game and the Patriots game, right, like for 10 minutes, both of them, and I I had more fun than I told you I fell off my porch and smacked my head off cement and uh, cut my knee and my toes when the porch gave way and I smashed my face. I had more fun getting injured, falling down, uh, than watching those two NFL games.
It's an incredible setup here. Incredible matchmaking. Incredible storytelling. Oh, you had to come here. All these fighters that step in here are warriors, and all have my respect. And I'm into this game. Yeah, we'll be into this. Yeah. And we are live here in the Maverick Center here in Salt Lake City, Utah. Folks. What a night it is going to be historic indeed for BKFC 56. Whoever's the king of violence right here, this is going to be a great fight. fighting in the city of Angels. We've got the biggest announcement in the BKFC history we're about to make, so let's make that announcement. What's up, Knucklemania? The notorious Conor McGregor here. Ladies and gentlemen, the huge announcement that I have for you today. Conor McGregor, myself, and McGregor Sports and Entertainment is now an owner of Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship. Welcome to the big leagues. David Feldman, baby, he did it. He's now an owner of BKFC with us, and we're going to take this motherfucking thing all the way to the top now. Carver High, very exciting for everyone. I mean, if that's really what you want to call it, uh, he was on the field, he threw a couple of screen passes, and that was it, uh, and they got him out of here. I can't figure it out. He's not going to be the starter, right? They're going to start for set. They're going to let the, right. the grizzled veteran go in there. Isn't last night against a bunch of hacks who aren't going to be in the league, isn't that when you want to – See a kid like him play? Like, isn't that the time to give him a a half and just let him get three, four, five series and see what he can do instead of running Bailey Zappi out there uh, for two quarters? Like, we haven't seen enough of Bailey Zappi in the New England area. I'll tell you, they are going to be awful uh, this year. That is going to be – their days are over uh, in New England. They have got – Worst record in the league. Uh, they, they are just ticking Written all that. over uh, him. <laughs> written all over him. I could see it. Uh, but Jersey Joe Milton from Tennessee shined in the second half uh, as he had a touchdown pass and led a couple of scoring drives. Here's Gerard Mayo saying, we played Mayo yesterday before the game, and he said May was going to play a lot. He lied. Yeah. Here Now he is saying that, oh, that was the plan all along. What went into the decision to pull him after one series tonight? Yeah, that was always the plan. Uh, the plan was no to get him in there for one series, to, to get uh, Jacoby in there for one series, and then really, you know, turn it to the Zappy show and then the Joe show. That was that was the plan uh, going there. Zappy you know, if show. he's in there, you want him yeah. in there with the starting offensive line. we got to protect that guy. Not saying we don't have to protect the other guys, but uh, that, that uh, absolutely did go into it. <laughs> so other guys aren't important. <laughs> they Listen, get killed. I just, by the uh, honestly, <laughs> my, my buddy's a um, – you know, big Patriot, season ticket holder, and, and uh, fan. I've gone to games with him up there. I hate him, and I hate them. And uh, I hope they lose every single game they play. Yeah, I'm with you. <laughs> uh, I, they can't lose enough, uh, to be quite honest with you. Uh, the Panthers had a hard time coming home. Uh, their flight back to uh, Charlotte went off the taxiway uh, when they landed. Thankfully, nobody hurt. But a uh, scary situation for the Panthers now, as they landed that's back. That's different uh, than the runway, uh, right? Like the taxiway. What the was the guy drunk? He <laughs> drove off the taxiway. Yeah, I, I'm not. Yeah, I, I don't know where you go with that. Uh, I'm not sure was exactly how. Was it a Denzel how they, Washington flight <laughs> where he was? He yeah. drank the whole mini fridge at the hotel. It's it's very possible he drove off. Uh, that that was the situation there uh, for that one. Uh, the Patriots also released uh, Juju Smith Schuster. You want him back in uh, back in your neck of the woods, Scotty? You want to bring back Juju uh, at a discounted price? Why no, not? but I'll I'll trade him to the Niners for uh, Brandon Ayuk <laughs> if, if yeah. that works for anybody. 
<laughs> What's going on with that? Uh, so much for that being close to being done. Uh, geez. Uh, Thursday NFL betting recap. Favorites 2-0 against the spread. Unders 2-0 as we head into tonight. I'm going to give you tonight and all of weekend's numbers, but I want to give you these two things quick. Here's Jerry Jones. Uh, he spoke in Oxnard after Cowboys practice. Again, they just won't keep the microphone away from Jerry uh, as he's going to be asked uh, if he feels any urgency to get a C.D. Lamb deal done. I mean, the guy hasn't been at camp. We're in the middle of August now. We're getting close to games. Uh, Jerry says he doesn't feel any at all. Are you saying there's a sense of urgency as you begin the preseason to get C.D. Down, done? No. No? Why do you say that? I'm just... Uh, just... Uh, Jesus. I went to high school or I went to college. I don't know why I said it, but I'm just saying I don't, I don't, I don't, know. I don't have a sense of urgency about getting it done. It's a long-standing tradition. Pick any reason you want. I did no boo two days ago. Give that as a reason. Yes, sir, I will. Put out there. That the boy went scary. to Nobu. Like, did you hear him? He stopped no, at Nobu uh, while he was out there. Listen, he is, uh, it's starting. It, it's the downfall has begun right there. It's in front of your very eyes. Like he, I honestly think he lost his train of thought, had no idea what was happening there in the moment. And it was uh, a very telling interview to me of where he is now. He's an old man and he's a mess. They got to stop letting this guy do uh, interviews and press conferences. I mean it. I mean, it is, it's, oh, I promise you, it's only going to get worse. This year, it's going to get worse. Watch. I guarantee it. So when the reporters, of course, tweeted out all those quotes from Jerry that he's, there feels no urgency, C.D. Lamb uh, went on Twitter and put LOL. Uh, so he's laughing as he sits at home uh, waiting for a new deal from the Dallas Cowboys. Of course, he's getting uh, his money. Win- yeah. Know that. He's going to get his money one way or the other. Uh, there's no question about that. Uh, the question is when and how much longer do you want to wait? Uh, Jameis Winston is the new backup in Cleveland. For Deshaun Watson, everybody loves uh, famous Jameis, and here he is, Scotty, talking up Deshaun Watson, saying that he's going to be back this year. I think that's one of the things that a lot of people forget. When you can go out, you can see practice, you can knick-knack, this, that, patty whack, give a dog a bone. Deshaun <laughs> Watson is going to turn it on. He always going to find a way to shine when the lights come on. Jamie, Man, I just rhymed. Oh my, can, can, I leave, can I leave off that one? I know that one's going to hit. <laughs> Boy, famous Jameis getting involved with some rhymes. Give a dog a Lights are going to shine. <laughs> he loves to Sean Watson. Uh, Sam Darnold will start the Vikings preseason game. J.J. McCarthy will play. That probably is like a Drake May will play. One series. He'll play a series, uh, and they're going to get him out. Caleb Williams will allegedly see action tomorrow against the Bills. I'm sure that'll be like a Drake. No, no, game. he's, he's, he's only gonna... playing that game two. Game two. Yeah. They, oh, they already played? They, they already played, played the Hall game. of Fame game. So he's playing yes. tomorrow? Yes, All against right. the Bills. He's going to play right. uh, allegedly at the beginning of that game. Bad news All for right. Falcons wide receiver Rondell Moore. He goes on the IR. Remember, he was carted off for practice. He's going to miss the entire season with his knee injury. He is. Bad news for them. Here are tonight's preseason games. Uh, As you've already discussed a couple of them here, the Steelers are at the place the Steelers play. Tonight against the Texans, Texans minus two and a half, minus two and a half for the Falcons in Miami, minus two for the Eagles in Baltimore against the Ravens. And this is, of course, our yearly reminder of how good uh, Harbaugh is, Scotty, in the preseason. Here are the numbers for you. 38-19-1 38-19-1 and one against the spread uh, in the preseason as their dogs tonight. Give me the Ravens as sure as I'm sitting here and the over. And I'll take the Steelers and the under. And I'll take the Dolphins and the under. I'm only going one over. The game in the Charm City. Only one over uh, for you. Of course, uh, unders are usually uh, the play. Man, those games were snoozers last night. Uh, that's for sure. All right, here we go. Uh, Saturday, lots of games. We'll go through the first ones. We'll do the rest after the break. Commanders are at MetLife against the Jets. Uh, Commanders, of course, minus two and a half in this one. Don't expect any Aaron Rodgers. The Bills are home for the Bears, minus two and a half. Allen is going to play a quarter, allegedly. 
The Raiders are in Minnesota. They're minus three. And the Packers getting five and a half in Cleveland against the Browns. The Jets will win because the Giants won, and then uh, they'll win another preseason game, and the tabloids will start talking, as they always do in August, about uh, the Giants and Jets rolling to the Super Bowl. Uh, the Bears will win because they already played, and they're gonna uh, they're gonna beat the Bills. Uh, and then uh, I like, well, I guess I got to take the Vikings uh, for no reason whatsoever. I think the Raiders stink. So do the Vikings, for that matter. Uh, and then. Uh, yeah, I, I like the Packers with that number. Give me the points in the Packers. I don't care who plays. I have to tell you uh, as well, and no one wants to hear it. Sorry. Uh, the preseason NFL is like literally the worst thing that ever happened to America. It's awful. It is. It is so it's awful. awful. It is. It's awful. It is literally I, I, high school football on Friday nights around the country is 10 times better than NFL preseason football. It is the absolute worst product on earth. I mean, I'd rather watch their flag football Pro Bowl game than this. And McGregor Sports and Entertainment is now an owner of Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship. Welcome to the big leagues. David Feldman, baby, he did it. He's now an owner of BKFC with us, and we're going to take this motherfucking thing all the way to the top now. with the BetMGM First Bet 1500. Here's how it works. Four easy steps. One, download the BetMGM app on iOS or Android or go to BetMGM.com. Two, sign up. Deposit at least 10 in your new account. Three, place your first wager and receive up to $1,500 back in bonus bets if the bet loses. And four, if the bet loses, your bonus bets will be available once your initial wager is settled. So you understand. They're giving you an opportunity to make a bet for fifteen hundred bucks, and if you lose, they're going to put fifteen hundred dollars uh, in bonus bets in your account. It's really simple, so take advantage of that as quickly as possible. Uh, you absolutely should do that. No questions about it. All right, here's the rest of the weekend slate for the NFL preseason. I gave you the day games on Saturday. Here's everything that's going to go on at night. Uh, Chiefs are in Jacksonville against the Jaguars. Remember, you're going to get some Mahomes there. Minus one and a half for the Jaguars, 40 and a half big total. Niners and the Titans 
Tennessee minus five and a half for Tennessee. Bucks are in Cincinnati where they are getting six points. Uh, the Seahawks and the Chargers in Los Angeles minus three for Seattle and the Cardinals. Uh, that actually is now, I have up to this second, Scotty, Saints minus one and a half with a flat 37 uh, for the yeah, total. I like, I like Arizona. I like uh, Harbaugh's Chargers. I like Tampa. And I like the Titans and Jags. And I'll tell you why. Because the Chiefs and Niners and Bengals do not try in preseason games at all they don't i mean they'd rather they'd literally rather lose every preseason game than to than to show their wares they're just not going to give you anything like uh, mahomes is playing they'll still lose they don't care they could care less about these games these games are a waste of time uh they are a waste of time uh there's no question about that uh we can't get to the first I don't know Thursday what it is, Mike. September. You can't even explain Fast it to enough. me. How can you have to tell I me? Can't. How can this league be the greatest league that this country absorbs? There is no league even that touches the NFL in America's heart, right? Like that's well, that's just all there is to it. People love it. And it's the greatest thing ever, but it's not great until whatever, September 5th when it starts. All I know is the preseason, like I have Steeler tickets. I couldn't even give them away. I mean, I couldn't give them away to, uh, like, anyone. Nobody wanted them. I tried to – I was just like, here, you can have the tickets. No one even wants them. The games are awful. I don't understand it. Why is it so bad? Because uh, unlike the other sports, uh, you know, baseball does a whole month of spring training games. You get star players who play every day because they need to get their two at-bats, their three at-bats. You know, the pitchers always have to ramp up. They're going to throw every five days. It's a month and a half long. You're there right. forever. You have NHL and NBA, which plays, what, five to eight preseason games in late September and then early October, uh, and they get going. They play their guys. They're not sitting their stars the entire preseason because they want to get them uh, burned. The NFL is the highest quality sporting product in this country uh the ratings tell you that how much we talk about it tells you that and the difference between a regular season nfl game and a preseason nfl game is so gigantic it's it's nowhere near anything else in any other sport that it's completely unwatchable because you're so you love that product so much and what they give you in the preseason is not even close because it's not the same players it's not the same guy. You know, you guys who are never going to sniff the field are playing uh, in the preseason for the NFL. It's a, not the same quality product, and that's why it's useless, and that's why nobody cares. It's just cares. diluted so badly. Yeah, that's precisely what it is, uh, and nobody gets in the mix. Uh, I think I still have for you Sunday games uh, that are thank diluted God. and not in the mix. I mean, thank uh, God. Broncos and Colts. Minus one and a half, and then the Cowboys and the Rams. Uh, out in Los Angeles uh, at SoFi, minus four for the Cowboys in that one. It's got to be the um, Colts and and uh, the Rams. It's got to be the Rams. Sean McVay, the second greatest coach in the NFL behind the great Andy Reid with all of his hamburger eating. All I know is uh, it's got to be. It's got to be McVay and the Rams. He's a winner. You would think so. Uh, here we go. Big favorites in the preseason. I now I have to throw you one stat before we go out for the weekend and bet all these preseason games. Since 2010, 14 years of data, NFL preseason favorites of more than three points are 153, 121, and three, a cool 56% against the spread. You have four of those this weekend. The Browns minus four, the Bengals minus six, the Titans minus five and a half, and the Cowboys minus four against the Rams, a cool 56%. I'm just, you know, this guy, John, amazes me with his homework that he does. It is it's truly phenomenal. Thank God that he got us all that uh, information on uh, who does the best with bigger spreads in preseason games. God bless him that he has the time uh, to afford to that kind of homework and that kind of background checking on games. Uh, what will I do? Without him, I don't know in terms of uh, him giving me all this skinny for these preseason games. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to bet not one penny on one of these games the entire month. 
I got I got a lot of tickets. Does that make me a horrible person or something around here? I don't understand. No, like, I, am I am I, I am I really like offending people that I don't bet on no, pack, don't high so. school football, NFL preseason I, like practices I say or whatever over you want to call again, them? If you want to go ahead and do it, by all means, have a blast. I'll I won't be participating. Uh, it's a dangerous way me. to lose your money. I'll tell you that much. You, if you Correct. count on some NFL preseason betting, you got something wrong with you. You have no idea who cares and who doesn't out on that field in any of those games. Uh, that's for sure. So there you go. NFL preseason, only three weeks of this. Uh, and then we'll get to the real deal, uh, ready to rock. All right. Uh, we'll come back and do leftovers. I will tell you that uh, they're trying to finish the first round at the Wyndham. There's no way they're going to finish uh, all of it today. They're going to have to finish it early in the morning. I have a guess that we will be finishing on Monday, Scotty. Yeah, uh, for the Wyndham Championship. Bo Hostler minus 10 in the clubhouse. How about uh, Billy Horschel, six under through eight? Uh, so he's going to have a chance maybe and tomorrow there's morning no fans. to steal. There's no fans at this uh, golf they, tournament? They, no, they do have some out there today. If they would have played yesterday, there would have been none, but no one played anyway. There's a few people that have gone out there today. They've got some oh. crowds. All right. today conor mcgregor myself and mcgregor sports and entertainment is now an owner of bare knuckle fighting championship welcome to the big leagues david feldman baby he did it. he's now an owner of bkfc with us and we're going to take this mother thing all the way to the top now This is the best thing that happens in their day. It's the double session of leftovers and Ferella finish. Uh, it certainly is. Uh, of course, we have lots of golf news. Uh, Phil Mickelson, who uh, has not played well on Liv, uh, Scotty, really since he joined Liv when it started three years back, uh, he spoke yesterday and thought uh, his future in the Liv, uh, he might not be around for long if his play continues to slip and he's willing to step back and let other guys play. Of course, there's only 54 golfers in live uh, each event, uh, and Phil knows that his time may be dwindling there, but he did say also he has exemptions for majors for a long time, and he still intends on playing in all of them, Masters, Open Championship, et cetera, et cetera. So you're not going to completely uh, get Phil out of the picture. Lots of Olympics. Noah Lyles out of that 4 by 100 after the COVID diagnosis. They didn't even medal. 
Sydney McLaughlin Lavorne destroys her own 400 meter hurdles world record. Congratulations there. 16 year old Quincy Wilson makes his Olympic debut. He becomes the youngest male track and field athlete to compete for the United States. Uh, the moment you are waiting for will be Sunday night, <laughs> the closing ceremonies. Katie Ledecky and Nick Mead will carry the United States flag. Of course, Katie Ledecky uh, with a bunch more medals here in this Olympics. Nick Mead, uh, I believe, Scotty, rowing, right? He's one of the United States I rowers. I have no uh, idea yes. who that is. <laughs> that is who he is. Uh, so we will say goodbye to the Olympics uh, here this weekend and get full into football on Monday. United States soccer is still looking for a new head coach. They have identified Mauricio Patuccino as the top target for the men's team. Of course, uh, he has coached in the English Premier League for a long time. He's with Tottenham for a long time. Uh, did an awful job. Uh, this past year where he was, uh, and f I wanted to be able to bring this. I know I usually leave the uh, unfortunate passings to your side, Scotty, but since it was golf, I wanted to mention Chi-Chi Rodriguez, Legend. 88 years old. And I know because uh, you obviously a little bit older than me, you saw a little bit more Chi-Chi uh, than I did. But when he would uh, you know, make a big shot, make a big putt, make a big chip in, and he would twirl that club around and do like a little shimmy out there. You talk that we need more of that in golf. Guys with personality, that's what yeah. Chi Chi Rodriguez was when he played. He uh, did the, you know, the bull. He would, he would, <laughs> the, he, the matador. He, <laughs> it was, oh, no. it was great. He was it the, was awesome. he, listen, I, I went to a lot of tournaments with uh, Chi Chi Rodriguez was, was there and, I covered a lot of golf and, and uh, I knew, I knew him. I met him. I interviewed him. This is like the nicest guy that ever played on the PGA tour. He was great yep. to, I mean, everyone, fans, women, children, old ladies. This was like the greatest ambassador for golf. The PGA has ever known. He was the nicest guy literally uh, I've ever met in golf. Uh, for all finished CrossFit Games competitor dies after drowning in a swimming event in the triathlon down in Texas. They found him floating in the water. What is happening there? A man is finally evicted out of his New York City apartment after running through the building nude and <laughs> pleasuring himself in public and bashing walls with a hammer. What is happening? Two people were stabbed at Red Rock Casino in Las Vegas. The suspect is shot by security. Sickos publicly playing the flute in public in the open in New York City has risen 51%. You can't go a block without seeing something horribly wrong and graphic in New York City. 15-year-old is accused of fatally murdering their neighbor in a hot tub. He said he wanted to feel what it was like to stab someone. <laughs> he got his he got his feeling all right. He stabbed the guy to death. Nice job, kid. A 39-year-old Iowa woman is arrested after poisoning her husband. Listen to this. With eye drops. The old Visine trick cover her eye. And I always thought that just led to diarrhea. She had it down to a science. Poisoning the husband and killing him with eye drops. A New Jersey woman sues a funeral home claiming her father's remains were never buried and sat in the funeral home basement for 31 years. What? A Texas husband who chopped off his newlywed wife's head got a 40-year stretch and fed. At least he beheaded her first so he didn't have to deal with her anymore. A Catholic priest in Austria has confessed to God and to his elders that he was cooking crystal meth in the <laughs> rectory. My man had it all going, the bathtub meth. Go to GTD next. We're all at events.com. We'll see you Monday at 3 on Coast to Coast. Have a great weekend.